This week's tutorial is all about Instagram story designs in Photoshop. So hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Photoshop design tutorial. My name is Manny and as always, you can find me on tronicsdesigns.com. So yeah, thanks again for tuning in. This is the first tutorial after a long while and today is a nice beginner tutorial. Again, if you are new to Photoshop canvas sizes, if you are new to color adjustment layers and also some fonts and how to work in Photoshop, this is the tutorial for you. We're gonna go a little bit into color adjustments and going to tweak the whole image so we achieve the look you've seen on the thumbnail. Then as well, we're gonna look at uh, changing something up with the adjustment layers and also working with two fonts to create a basic Instagram story design. So yeah, enough of the talking, let's get right away into it. So I'm gonna go to File, I'm gonna go to New, and first of all, create a Instagram Stories canvas size. Now I know some of you guys are advanced, please skip ahead of this. For all the newbies, please have a look at this. So currently it says under Recent, but you have to create this completely from scratch. That's meaning you have to select the width for 1080 and the height in 1920. You can go with resolution to 72, and then here RGB color, white background, and you can say create and right away, right away you will have a canvas size that goes for Insta Stories. But you can also save this. So like I have under my saved here, I already have this preset. So I just double click and open it. So how to do this is literally click on here, rename it to maybe Insta Stories, save the preset, and you're good to go. Okay, so let's open this. I'm gonna create quickly a new canvas. I'm gonna zoom out slightly of this. And we're gonna first of all change this to a black background layer. So I'm gonna double tap here on the background, hit OK, and press Command I to invert this layer. Now again, I'm a Mac user, but if you're a Windows user, please press Control when I say Command. Okay, so first option is to just make it a black layer. Then I would go ahead and create a complete new color, solid layer. So how I would do this is basically create a new layer from down here take the marking tool from the tool panel and just make a complete selection, right click and say fill. But remember you have to select inside the selection you have to right click. Now, it will come up how I wanna, what you wanna fill it with. I'm gonna go with color and I will have here under the hashtag, I will have a certain number. You guys can also find it here on the screen or again down below in the description. So this it is, 475944. Okay, I'm gonna hit OK and select OK. Press Command D, get out of the selection. And I've got a nice uh, little bit of an army darker tint there. Okay, not that dark, but you guys get what I'm saying. Okay, I'm gonna leave it with 100% opacity. My next step would be now to obviously add a photo on top of that. So I'm looking here at some palm tree leaves. I've already selected it out. And over here, you guys can see this. So let's move this over here. I'm gonna press F again to get back into the full screen mode. And with the V, with the move tool, move this a little bit around. And I think the size is really good enough. If I wanted to be a bit bigger, I might then just press Command T, get into the transform mode, select Shift and select an anchor point and just literally make this a little bit bigger. Okay, I'm gonna move it around. I see here my anchor point also works nicely with the center, but I'm happy for that now. I'm gonna hit Enter and just accept that. Now, I wanna first of all tweak my image a little bit with a color and get a cool effect out of this. So my first step here would be just tweaking the layer a little bit. I'm gonna take down the opacity a little bit of this. So something around, let's start actually with 50%. So I'm gonna type 50 here. Okay, and it gives me a nice darkish contour, or like a little bit of a washed out look. I'm gonna go a little bit brighter. 35, okay, I'm gonna stick with that. And then first of all, add just two adjustment layers. The one would be a selective one, a selective color adjustment layer, and the other one would be curves. So I'm gonna go to adjustments here. If you guys don't have adjustments, remember, you can always go to windows and select adjustments here. Okay, so under adjustment layers, the first step I will do is go to selective color. I'm gonna select it, and let's make a bit of space here so we can see something. And now, under the color tones, I'm not gonna work in the neutrals, I'm gonna work just in the black tones, okay? Select the blacks, and now I'm gonna tweak this a little bit. So first of all, my blacks over here, I'm gonna tweak this up again, 
a little bit. Remember our black layer here at the moment is not affecting this at all. It's only the green layer underneath. So if you want to also decrease, decrease this a little bit, you can actually go to like 80 or 40 or 50% as well. And then remember together these both will be affected. But for now, I'm gonna stay with 100%. Okay, let's go back to selective color. Black, I'm gonna go with like a plus six over here. Whoops, sorry. And let me zoom in a little bit bigger. Okay, and then I will play a little bit with my yellows. My picture has a lot of yellows, so I will tweak this a little bit down until I get to these bluish purple tones. So I'm gonna go to something like minus 14, 13. Yeah, let's stick with minus 14. And then magentas, I'm gonna tweak them up a little bit, plus just to make that contrast a little bit better again. Uh, I'm gonna go with like a plus eight or nine. Remember, obviously we are darking, our blacks are going up now and we're getting more contrast, but in a little bit, I'm actually gonna uh, tweak the blacks a little bit and flatten them again. Okay, so over to Cyan, let's play a little bit with this. Yeah, here it just gets very reddish, so let's take it up. Yeah, and here I get a little bit of a blues again, so maybe like a plus 10, plus 11. That's good enough. Okay, cool. So that's basically all I'm doing here for just the selective color adjustment layer with just the black tones. Remember, not gray, red, or yellow, just the blacks. Let's go back to adjustments and I'm gonna select the curves layer and on top have another curves adjustment layer. Now I'm gonna first place an anchor point, one over here, one over here, and one over here. And now my last anchor point down here in the black tones, I'm gonna tweak that up a little bit. So I'm basically fading just the blacks, as you guys can see now over here. Okay, and I don't wanna overdo this, something like this. Yeah, then I'm happy with it. Okay, so that's basically my first step of just tweaking my picture. Obviously, once I've done my design, I will most probably go back and tweak it a little bit more depending on how much my contrast and how much my text actually stands out. So select all of this, press Command G, Again, Windows users, don't forget to press control when I say command. So this would be now just my background layer. Okay, let's rename it to background. Now on top of that, I'll start with a, like a frame. So here what I would do is go back to view, new guides, and I can actually say with vertical, I'm gonna say like just 10%, let's try this. 10%, okay and it's quite thick. So I would like to go a little bit less. So let's go to view, new guide once again, and I'm just gonna say 5%. Yeah, okay, that is also still a bit thick, but I guess I will go a little bit lower. So what I can also do is press V on the keyboard in order to get into the move tool. I'll just select the ruler, the uh, guideline here, sorry, and move it over to the rulers. Guys, if you also don't have the rulers, press Command R in order to see them, or go back to view here and select rulers. Okay, this guideline is also thick. I'm gonna go back to view once again, new guide, and I'm just gonna say like 4%. Yeah, and that's what I want. Okay, 4% it is. Now what I'll do is create a new empty layer again and I'll take the marking tool, quickly make a selection over this, so basically from the outside all over, I'm gonna click right click, say fill once again, and this time on the contents, I'm gonna select white. Okay, press Command D, get out of the selection. I'm gonna press V again to get into the move tool, and press Command J, that means you're duplicating this layer now. Then I'm gonna take it and just move it all the way over to the left side until it clips here to my canvas edge. Okay, I've duplicated the layer. Now I wanna rotate it. So I'm gonna to go to edit, transform, and say here rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Great, so now I'm just gonna move it all the way to the top, clip it, and command J, V for the move tool, and take it all the way down. Now this is the quickest and easiest way to do it, and I feel my border is still a little bit thick. I can actually do it a little bit less, so it's not that thick, so we could have maybe gone with like 3% instead of four. Okay, let's make a bit of space. I'm gonna take all of this and just move it together in one group and call this graphics. Okay, over like so. And now under graphics, I'm still gonna add one more layer. I'm gonna again press Command J on the horizontally rotated layer. Let's just move this a little bit up. And I want this to be kind of like a little bit of a stripe in here. But I feel it's quite thick. 
So I'll take the marking tool and obviously delete here a little bit and uh, say half of it. Obviously I'm doing this quite quickly. So if you do this, please take a bit more time when you do this stuff. Okay, move this somewhere over here. And yeah, happy with that. Now we're gonna go to the next step. Actually, I have to, I'm lying to you guys. I am not so happy with the border right now. So let me take the border again and just move this with my cursors over a little bit. So I'm gonna, just gonna hold shift, tap once, tap twice, do the same over here, once, twice, once, twice, and the bottom once, twice. Nice, so now it looks a bit thinner to me and I like it a bit more. Okay, so now back to our text here. What we're gonna do is select the text tool, basically make a selection over here, and our first trip, or first text would say travel plans. So I'm gonna write now, all in capital letters, travel, and let's make space, plans. Okay, select all of it. First of all, the font that I need to select, it is the right font already, Monst. Serat. I think you guys can also read more about this in the description. Then I'm not going to go with semi bold. I will go just with the normal bold over here. The size, I might change the size a little bit down. Mm, it is quite big. So let me take this a bit down to like 51%. 47, a bit less. 43, that's all right. Okay, then I will also go to the character box here. Guys, if you don't have the character box, again, go to Windows and select the character box. Then, first of all, I'm gonna move the tracking for up and down a little bit in. I will also select the right side, so it all snips to the right side. Okay, I'm gonna move this slightly up still, just a little bit until it feel I feel like it, it works a bit better together. Okay, like so, accept it, and take the move tool. And I'm just going to move it here until to the end of my guide. So you can also see here with CC, uh, Photoshop CC, there's the pink guideline that snaps right away. So I'm happy with that. Great. Next text that I will do is again select the text tool and just make a selection down here. And I'm going to copy just the normal lorem text from the web. So we can actually just use that. So let's paste that in here. I just copied it. So I'm going to press Command V in order to copy. And I have obviously a massive text in here. So let me select all of it. And first of all, go all the way to the left here so we can align the text to the left side. Okay. And I'm going to make it a bit smaller. Like so. I feel this kind of works already. Maybe, uh, maybe a little bit bigger, like 16.18. That's fine. I'm also going to go with the same text and keep it to bold. Now I will just take again the tracking here and set the leading. Okay, a little bit more. Like so. I, this is kind of like a gut feeling a little bit until you feel I'm happy with the spacing. And then I'm going to accept it. Take the move tool and I'm also going to move this slightly down here. So now I'm also looking at that I wanted not to be spaced exactly the same. I can either do it in the middle or keep it a bit like so. Cool, and that's basically it. Let's take this guideline, we're gonna move this out, zoom out a little bit, and now we can still tweak our background a little bit if we feel, nah, the text is not standing out too much. Let me actually just take the text layers here, press Command G, I'm gonna write here text as well, so I know this is my text layer, and move this group all the way out. So we have graphics and text all separate. Great, I'm gonna go back to background and have one more test here. I'm just gonna tweak this down a little bit further so it just gets a bit less dull. Obviously the more I tweak it up, the more contrasty it gets. So let's stick with like 50%. And then also here my curves, I'm gonna tweak them slightly a bit still just to darken this. So yeah guys, that's it for this week's Photoshop design tutorial. As always, have a look. There's a Tronics Design Media Package for $4.99 a month where you get to download everything that I design every single week from all the brushes, PSDs, backgrounds, shapes, everything that you need to set yourself up in order to do these designs. So yeah guys, if you do like this content, do hit me up with a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below what I can do to improve this channel and also don't forget to subscribe. So thanks again for watching guys. I'll catch you all in the next episode. See ya!
yeah, as I can see, you are still here. So this basically means you are interested in some more tutorials. We've got some popular and some more, some most watched, I think.